and it just grew from there, really. Client numbers just kept going up and up and up. The more we ourselves, the more fun we're having. We were doing less fitness videos, more fun, more banter for want of a better term. Turning yourself from a job to a business is very, very difficult. If you want to do it that way, you're great, crack on. But if you don't want to do it that way, we're going to tell you, like we have done in this video, our way works. And the problem is, is that you will never feel safe, never whether you earn 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand. <laughs>how we grew a seven figure online fitness business. Hello, we are Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, not Business and Banter anymore. Um, and we're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way we can whatsoever. Um, what do we know? Nothing apparently, but we waited for a while for this one, haven't we mate? This video has been a long time coming. Yeah, and like, and like do you know, it's one of those things where we're, we're not wanting people to, to, to join us because of, um, financial reasons and so on and so forth and we're not the fl we're not the flashiest people like we don't um you know show off about watches and cars and things like that we may have nice things but we don't want it to be a, a focal well one of us does i, I don't have any nice things <laughs> no, you, you know you've got you've got me and i'm quite nice um you've got about four i've got some nice flip flops it's yeah. fine don't worry about it but but anyway it, it's one of those things where we almost feel a little bit you know we hate to let's be honest we just hate talking about we don't, it it's, yeah because it shouldn't be a selling point it shouldn't be a reason you sign up for someone it shouldn't be the primary thing because you've got no idea how someone's made their money like there's a lot of scam artists out there for yeah. example there's a lot of people who just you know ruin people um with that and we've always been a bit hesitant of talking about it because i think it gives us a bit of a, i hate the word ick because i don't really have any icks but it's one of those i've not liked talking about it and even specifics when you see people bragging about stuff and you kind of feel yeah. a bit like it's not, I say not something to brag about, but it's a bit like over overused and overplayed, isn't it? A little bit, I and think, I, I as, just, a, as a strategy. And I, and I feel like, I think there's a right and a wrong way to do it as well. I think the wrong way is kind of what we've seen in the fitness industry. Chavs that are shouting and boasting about how much money that they earn with, with actually no real backup. You don't actually know whether they've done that, especially based off of um, previous where it's very quick when somebody has a 10k a month to then extrapolate them to a six-figure business owner they're not a six-figure business owner they just did a 10k a month replicate that okay for the next 12 months wicked six-figure business mm. owner so the reason why we've waited is we've actually waited till we've done 12 months where we've actually done seven figures mm -hmm. which we have done we didn't do one good month then go yep now we've earned a million like which we know definitely goes on We've waited, yep. we've bided our time so that we're now able to ha maybe have a little bit more credibility to some degree where we can actually start to speak around these things and we can kind of show you guys what we've done to, to build a business, which is not anything revolutionary. It's nothing major, you know, it's, not, it's nothing major that we've done. We've been consistent um, and we'll kind of expand on that um, in this video. But we, we have had reservations around talking about that. And the, we, the way that we want to put it across is, is in a very different way, as opposed to going, look how much money we've got, come work with us. It's more so, right, mm. okay, well, because we've been able to do certain things at certain parts of our journey, here's how we've done them. Maybe you can learn some things around what we've done and, and also what we've done wrong as well. I think we want to use it as a way to show you that, that the basics done well consistently can get you to that point. That's how we want to use it. And, and certainly how, you know, when we've spoken about it previously is that people get sucked in by seeing all these things online and all the money and all the cars and watches. Then they assume that person must have the hack. Whereas we're literally telling you right now that it's the basics. It's the same as you saying to your clients it's about a calorie deficit and moving more. It quite literally is the same thing in terms of basics done well over time. It's just finding those basics and then it is being consistent over time. Like the amount of hours worked. There's a lot of people as well in this space talking about how few hours you can do and, and, and build an amazing business and how it's all like you know travel the world and live on beaches and and we obviously haven't done those things we've literally sat in our office most of the time doing work and we're very much from that crowd of like work hard get your head down get amazing results and it will pay off and it will come to to fruition so we want to talk about like our journey from say zero to eight years because it's our eighth year now uh, fifth year together fourth fifth, year together fifth year together, fifth year yeah. together yeah fifth year together um i've been with him longer than my wife technically and when anniversary is two years this December. So yeah, but you've been with her. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been with her longer, but technically yeah. it's like anniversaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been with him a while. But no, it, it, and it's to show you guys as well, like when we say these things and we talk about the basics and we say, look, we've been doing this for a long time and we want you to believe us and want you to show, we want to show you that, look, doing that over time works and we've done it for eight years and that's why we are where we are. You can get blinded by all the fancy shit and all the tactics and the strategies and the hacks if you want. But we're here and we, the whole reason we started this whole channel, the whole reason we started our whole 
this in, in this industry is to show you that it is fairly simple so as, I, as, a, as a standard. Did thing. I tell you about the time I was in first class? And, what uh, the, what? On the train, was it? The, yeah, on the train. And the gate comes around, can I see tickets, please? Tickets, tickets, please. please. Is that uh, a line, is it? Uh, well, <laughs> what, what was it again? <laughs> I can't hear anything. Um, <laughs> that's an extra Extra. Um, yeah, and I said, oh, I earn more than you in, yeah. in 10 years. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's a dickhead's quote. Um, yeah, so <laughs> zero to three. Uh, what were our first years like? What did we do? Where were we by the end of year three? Um, Fucking nowhere. I wouldn't say nowhere. No, nah, we weren't nowhere. So we started off, uh, so we we met, Mike actually came to watch me speak at an event, funnily enough. Um, well, I didn't go for you, you were there. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah I, was, I was last minute, last minute, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah. Just just, just, um, just drafted in last minute. And um, Undulating anyway, so, periodization. Yeah, that was it. About. Yeah, yeah, DUP, wasn't it? And um, we, it's basically, our, we worked at Teambox together. So there was body type nutrition with Ben Coomba. That was a long, long time ago now. It's where I started while I was working in football and then gradually moved into being a one-to-one PT. And then we did the online stuff. And we started um, working together in Team Box, which we thought was our own venture with, with a few other people, which turned out not to be. Um, it turned out to be one person's venture. Um, and anyway, without boring you with that, there's, there's, there's videos about that elsewhere. But we were probably consistently in the nought to three years between 15 to 25, 30 clients all the time ups and downs within that, um, very much putting out generic, boring, professional nutrition content, mm. pretty much. Yeah. To sum up, let's not bore you with the whole three years because that's pretty much what we did endless, mindlessly for three years. We, we tried loads of other shit, loads of little projects, just nothing ever worked because it was all just boring, professional nutrition. Yeah, well, the mistakes that we made were were trying to be too professional, um, mm. not, not through our um, doing really. Uh, I think I was definitely the least professional. I remember me being... Yeah. relatively crude on like podcasts and so on and so forth yeah, and yeah. trying to make people laugh like like I used to do um and um we'd spent time doing <sighs> trying to develop an app mm. we spent time doing a video library we spent time iterating different versions of like spreadsheets, spreadsheets. Yeah. like it was it was tasks that were distracting from what we actually needed to do which was to create better content that was more niche specific and more personal, personally branded. It was more down the professional route and we were just getting focused on this and that and we might get a contract and an affiliation with this person. And Yeah, that, a lot remember. of chat, wasn't there? Yeah, but there yeah. was one thing we did do very well that uh, that I believe stood us uh, in, in good stead for, for the future years. And one thing we always talk to clients about now is that we did walk the walk at that point. Mm. That was the one reason I think we actually got clients because looking back at content, I can't imagine how we did um, with that. But we were doing photo shoots. We, you competed. Yeah. Um, there was very much the element of we were well into the fitness stuff and we, I used to actually enjoy training them, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, you know, we were proper living and breathing it. Um, and, and obviously had a bit of license with our stories to kind of be our own selves a little bit. But um, that was the one thing I said that probably got us yeah. clients. I'd, I'd say so. Like, I'd, I'd, I'd got a little, I think I'd got a little bit of a voice like at that time. Yeah. Because Steve was telling people he was going to try to shut me up. So, somebody shut him up. Yeah, so basically, um, yeah, we had we had a couple of events where basically, like, we, we met some, I say big wigs, they were fucking not big wigs at all, looking back. They were just people that were trying to, and, you know, yeah. trying to use us for our audience or trying to, you know, get some endorsements from us. And and Steve would say to the people, oh, don't worry about Mike, I'm trying to turn him down. Mm. Um, and, and probably a few more conversations like that privately we didn't know about. But, you know, then the, one of the guys we saw at Body Power was like, no, no, turn him up. Turn like, him up. turn him up. Yeah. And we actually went to see, me and Steve went to a, um, we had a marketing guy come in, remember? And he said, Alistair. He said, make him do more stuff. That's me. And then another one of my clients, she was a CEO of a big company in London. Where I trained in person. She said the same thing about you. She was Is like, she? yeah, put him at the front. Because it was the RAF thing, relatable in it to working class scum down there. Oh, um, no, it was that whole thing about relatability and personality and that sort of stuff. And, you know, we, we kind of missed the warning signs or missed the, say warning signs, missed the, the recommendations at that point. Um, but then after three years, we just got sick and tired of it. And we were like, well, we're not making any more money. We're not doing anything well. We've given it enough time we need to do something different here. So then me and you were just like, we're going to do our own YouTube. Uh, no, we did our own content videos, like a bit like this for Facebook, just taking a piss out of each other and other people and having a laugh with it. And they just, the reach was just really good. Yeah. Like, I remember the engagement was good. Reach was good. Um, and Phil Learney commented on one at the time and shared it, I think. Sure. And he was at the time, um, someone we looked up to in, mm. in nutrition and training world. Still do. Don't know, sorry, Phil. Um, but someone at the time, a long time ago, when he was big into that industry, we looked up to and, and been to see him speak. And it was a really weird feeling. Um, then we went to Body Power, didn't we? Uh, we launched then a YouTube channel off the back of that uh, yeah. as well. We did it separately ourselves because we were like, fuck this, we want to just do our own thing. Call it something different, which was Biceps and Banner, funnily enough. Um, and I think that pissed some people off, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, they got a bit pissed off, like the, the, other, the other group, because 
I think people were kind of seeing us as a as a separate entity at that that you know at that time people were watching the YouTube channel. It was different. Um, we weren't putting out generic fitness content again. Mm. It's kind of everything that we do that we tell you guys to do as well um, in terms of getting your personality over, thinking outside the box, not doing the mundane, not trying to educate. If you go back and watch those YouTube videos, that I mean, they're awful. Like, <laughs> And obviously we would cringe at them. Some of them are brilliant though. Like when, when we, yeah, the spoof videos. But it, it's, it's not like anything else that you would see in fitness. Like nothing. So whether you love it or hate it, it doesn't matter. There's nothing like it. It's uh, Alex almost, he calls it one of non-videos, isn't he? Like um, where he's the only one making that video and then other people try to copy it. So so that's what we're doing. So yeah, we got to year three. I was personally between like 25 and 30 for the most part. Never really went above 30. I think a couple of dips down to like the 21, 22 and panic, obviously a bit of anxiety. So we came out of Team Box and we were probably earning four or five grand a month, something along those lines. That that probably translates. Yeah, to, a good month. You know, yeah. four four or five grand a month. Um, the the YouTube channel is a thing that kind of took us quite quickly to the to the next step, um, which again is why we can speak confidently that we believe it to be the right thing to do. Is that pretty much the the month that we left? I know I shot up from thirty straight to fifty clients. And then you look back and you analyze and you go, okay, so what changed? Well, I was more myself. That's it. I, I was more myself. The shackles had been taken off. I didn't need to watch what I was saying. I could swear. Um, I could be a little bit more abrasive. Um, mm. And I went very quickly from 30 to 50. So at that time, that would have been me probably sat then maybe seven grand, seven grand a month, something mm. like that. Um yeah, six, seven grand, I think it would have been where, whilst I was in, in, in Bath, when I when I moved yeah. down to Bath. Um, and it just started to grow from there, didn't it? And that's where, you know, we, we got to a point where I think I, I took a few more months than you to get my head around the whole being myself and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I think you, you knew straight away um, what that meant. It took me a little bit longer. And I think the YouTube videos helped with that because it really allowed us to come out of our shell. And people were talking about it. People were messaging us all the time about the, those videos. And like I said, we both quite quickly got to a place where we were kind of full with clients, but ha you know, much, much happier with clients. Felt like we were a little bit like, okay, cool, we're maxed out maybe. I think I, at that point, felt like at 50 clients, I was like, oh, I'm pretty full now. I think you might have had a bit more than that, 60, 70. And we just kind of like, just kept pushing the envelope with it. It didn't mean in terms of the number of clients. It just kept going, right, we hired a videographer to do some video stuff for us. So that took a bit of time for me for the editing. Because yeah. I was doing a lot of the editing on the YouTube and stuff like that. So that took a bit of time away from that. So I could take on more clients um and we went all in on youtube we said didn't we, we were like we're gonna give it a year we were like we need to give it a year see what happens we got to a thousand subscribers uh within like nine months ten months which for youtube channels very very quick growth um believe it or not um it's like the hard one of the hardest things to do on, on youtube um and, and it just grew from there really um you know client numbers just kept going up and up and up the more we were ourselves the more fun we we're having we were doing less fitness videos more fun uh, more banter for want of a better term um and then you moved out here to dubai yeah, so I think so. COVID, it was three years up to 30 clients. Yeah. And, and again, I, I just want to stress that sometimes we'll get some clients in who are at 30 clients after six months and are upset about that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, imagine, imagine being at 30 clients three years later. Like, yeah. that, that's, what, that's what we were. That's how long it takes. You know, unfortunately, there's unrealistic expectations that are set because there's um, the, the top 1% that you now compare yourself to. Mm. Look at the 90 odd percent that's below you that it never gets anywhere. 30 is a, a great number. Yeah. So yeah, year three we left. By year four, we'd pretty much got Harry on. So our first hire was the videographer. By year five, I think we were full technically. I think year five, I hit 100, like roughly yeah, 100, 100 clients. clients. I yeah. think you were about 60, 70. Yeah, that might yeah. sit a little bit lower than, than, than me. Um, and then that was our first hire. Our first hire in terms of coaching came on at that time. So we brought- well, We launched group coaching, didn't we, first? Yeah, we launched group coaching. So yep. so what? Year six. Yep. So year six was then when we brought out another product, which was a group coaching product, an eight-week group coaching fat loss program. Um, year six. Year six. Not month six or week six. Year six. Yeah, we got full with one-to-one -one clients first for us. We, we thought that was the best thing to do. Um, and we wanted to get, again, a bit more time. We wanted to be able to help more people and get more money in the business, obviously, but- um, but we couldn't take on more one-to-one clients. So it yeah. was the next logical step. And then we did that, launched it. God, I think we got like, I have to say this to all the clients I launched group coaching with now. I think we got like 47. 48. 
48. Yeah. Me and Mike together, 48 in our first launch. And I get I get coaches who are like, oh, I'm really annoyed. I only got 30 on my first yeah. one. I'm like, fucking that's brilliant. Like, yeah. unbelievable. Again, like, that's just the thing. All these wild numbers thrown out there on social media. And it's like, that's that's really good. 30 people putting their hand in their pockets to pay you money is ridiculous. Anyway, so then we did that. And then we realized we needed a new coach. We needed another coach to come in and help. Um, because we had all these people that wanted to carry on with one-to-one -one coaching. And we were like, okay, we need to grow this to, to make it bigger and better. Um so then we went through a process of hiring coaches every time we needed one, basically. And, and, and yeah, we made mistakes along the way and all that sort of stuff. But that, we knew that we couldn't do it all ourselves. Yeah, so th that was like the evolution of, of starting to create a business mm -hmm. out of a job. And obviously, we'd never really been business owners. So whether whether you choose to agree with this or not, you're not a business owner, really. Yeah, yeah. You, you might have got, a, you know, you might be a sole trader and you might have got a business account, but you're not really a business owner. You, you're doing a job. And obviously we came across all the problems that a business owner might have is that it's very difficult to hire staff. Um, it's very difficult to start to scale the business, especially like a personally branded business where you're trying to take a step back. For us, that's where we did use a group coaching to our effect um, because it's useful for having somebody or having a client come into the business that's um, almost not faceless to some degree, but um, they're coming in and joining the brand as opposed to the person because it's mm -hmm. a lower cost offering. Um, which will which allowed us to get our first coach full and like Dan said we then went through the process of every time that we got a coach full we were using the group coaching launches as the lower cost entry into coaching to get a higher volume of people so that our second coach and third coach could then again take on 25 30 clients whatever it, it, it tended to be um, so that's how we went around it during that far year five to year seven we then made a couple of hires, which we should probably talk about, and we tried to develop an app. Um, so again, not learning from previous mistakes where we tried to develop an app, a very different form of app from what we tried to do at Teambox where mm. we were like filming at 3 a.m., doing video libraries that, you know, never materialized, and, you know, never saw the light of day. Um, to an app that was almost like a coaching-based app for our, for our group coaching, which it wasn't a bad idea. It's just when we got it through... We, it just turned out to be more difficult to use than what we were currently using, unfortunately. So we wasted about 12 grand on that. We also wasted, we also spent 12 grand on maybe getting some some help. Not really much change after 12 grand of help, I'll, I'll be honest. So that was probably something else that we maybe slipped up on. Um, so we spent a little bit of time and a little bit of money in terms of that. Um, we also spent around nine grand on an influencer mm -hmm. um, to help with some marketing. Nothing really happened again. Um, do I believe influence marketing can work? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course I do because you see big brands do it all the time. Um, but in terms of our business and, and your business, it's going to be very difficult to get the right one, the right audience, to manage them, to come up with the right um, offering to that person. So it's a little bit more difficult. I think we spent probably somewhere in the region of about 12 grand on Facebook ads as well. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really change anything within the business. Again, we've been through all the processes that normal people or normal coaches would start to look at and start to think, right, okay. And that's why we can confidently sit yeah. here and tell you what has worked and what hasn't worked. And, and we probably wasted there in total, so 9, 12, 12, and 12. So that's 36, 45. So that's about 45 grand wasted. And, and the other thing as well I will say on that is that the reason those numbers are quite high as well is because we're not just these people that just go, oh, do it once and try it as in like for a week or two. Like we gave it, we gave the ads a good- Six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. It's two grand a month. Mm -hmm. The mentor was two grand a month. Mm -hmm. uh, the app was over a three, four month period. We developed that mm -hmm. and, and tweaked it and tried to make it work and tried to make it better. I think that's the other thing I would say about that is that a lot of a lot of coaches all try and add for a week. Oh, it didn't really work. Didn't get anything. In. We mm -hmm. no, we we gave it the time of mm -hmm. day, which is why when people come to us and ask us those questions, we feel confident saying, "Don't bother." Mm -hmm. Don't bother. Yes. Why well, cold the DMs, cold outreach, whatever. I'm just like, don't do it because it's effective what 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 Facebook ads are, right? Um, so yeah, I think with that, again, like without going into specifics of numbers necessarily, but probably doing, you know, pretty decent months there with, with just the, the training and nutrition stuff, right? It was, it was, it was going pretty well. It was getting to the point where obviously, you know, you moved here. I think I followed you. Yeah. I think we were somewhere around, um, I think we're somewhere around 500,000. Mm. I think that yeah. that's where we're at. Yeah. Um, roughly. Yeah. Um, with the launches, with some of the coaching payments and yeah. then with mine and yours. I think we were roughly around there about about 500 when i when i kind of moved yeah um which was obviously amazing um you know so 
we also hired the we also hired staff we we, we hired a, a social media manager as well um yep. again um great guy lovely lad um just didn't work out in terms of in terms of what what we needed again i think sometimes when people come to us with ideas and we kind of not rubbish them to some degree and we just kind of say no don't don't worry about that yet i think people just think oh we're just tossing tossing that off but it's like no 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 we're telling you everything that we've done in eight years you can probably do it in quicker time than that if you'd have not taken six months to do this yeah. four months to do that six months to do that and started to look up in in directions that you don't need to look at to the, to get you to a point where at year eight for us where we're at we are at with our net profit having made the mistakes but having the beauty of hindsight to tell you what not to focus on yet, at least anyway. I think with that as well, the other thing is that we realized that the reason a lot of that stuff didn't work out in terms of hiring people is because we weren't at the time, or maybe not now as, as much, but good managers. That's the thing coaches forget is that the second you hire a coach or you bring someone into business, you, you're a manager. You're not, you're not just you on your own. You can't assume people know what to do. You can't assume that they're as good as you. You can't assume that, that they're going to do everything to the, to the, value, uh, the standards that you do. And you can't assume they have the same values that you have. Um, that was one of our mistakes throughout all the hiring process. Like you said, with, with Sam, the social media guy, like, like great, one of the funniest guys I've ever met in my life, like just brilliant to have around and everything like that. But we were quite poor in terms of what we expected of him. We, we were just poor. Like I'll be, I'll be completely honest about it. I don't think it's, it's anyone's fault. And I think even now the job actually isn't really there. It's not, it's not that, that, that I don't think, um, you know, he could have done it. It's just that we didn't have the deliverables there. We weren't in that position and we've, we've, we've had help before and people have told us, you know, you need to have SOPs and things in place. And, and the thing that I've realized from where we're at now is it's, it's managing people is the, one of the hardest jobs you'll ever have to do when you grow a business beyond just working yourself with someone else you may bring on to help with a bit of coaching. That's not really managing someone, but when you start growing to that level, it's the hardest bit without that. Yeah. Turning, the hardest bit. Turning yourself from a job to a business is, is, is very, very difficult. Mm. So yeah, so that was kind of where we were at. Um, when I moved, I think we hired a copywriter in year six or year seven as well to take over the emails. We've subsequently taken them back because we have the time and, you know, mm -hmm. I say we quite like doing them. Dan definitely picks up my slack on those, um, at least at the moment. Um, and, that, and that's it. And we've just, gone from there and we've just given well, it, well, then given I suppose it the, the, well the main thing then from them was when obviously you moved over here um was i followed you but also with that the reason this evolved into what it is today is because we were working with a lot of pts and coaches at the time and they were sort of saying oh you guys you know done really well it looked like you've done really well um I, i've got a business mentor at the moment he's telling me to do this this and this is that what you've done we were like no why are you doing that what the fuck's that all about and just kept having PTs and coaches ask us all the time, like, have you done this? Have you done that? And all we just saw that all the advice being given was horrific. And stuff that we were like seeing people go, oh, you have to charge up front. You have to do this. You have to do cold outreach. And we were sat there going, hang on, we've got this business that makes this much money. We ain't done any of that. So you don't have to do that at all. And what started out as a bit of a piss takey kind of way of doing it, we were like, hang on a minute. People then come into us asking, can you help me with this? Can you help me with my business? I want to grow like you've grown. I want to do what you've done. And we were just like, well... Because at the time, the people in the in this part of the industry, we we just looked at them with disdain as in like they don't know what they're talking about, not not doing that great themselves potentially. <laughs> um, since learned that's true, um, and and seeing out some really poor advice, and we just kind of felt a little bit like, well, we feel it. Well, we have to share what we've done there. We have to share it because otherwise, people are going to get scammed and out of all their money and told to do things that are just factually incorrect when they don't want to do that. If you want to do it that way, you're great, crack on. But if you don't want to do it that way, we're going to tell you, like we have done in this video, our way works. Our way has got people where they need them to be. It's not just us now. We've replicated it 18 months in. We've replicated it with a lot of coaches um, that have got to the same sort of place. And it just shows you there's a different way. I think that was the big thing for us was... Yeah. We know this was never part of the plan. Was what I'm saying is that you know when, when we were, you know, doing our YouTube videos and we were you know, even when you moved out here, the plan wasn't to to go into this this area at no. all. But we felt kind of I say duty bound. It makes it sound like we're fucking yeah. No, we heroes, kind of but. like fell in, fell into it to some degree. Like you say, we we were coaching a lot of coaches nutritionally and training wise, mm. and they obviously know their stuff nutrition and training. So th the updates just became more so like, oh, do you mind helping with this client or what yeah. do you do with this or that or you know. And we kind of fell into it. And I think certainly for me, it was a bit of a, an epiphany moment where it was like, I've had Dan to bounce off and to um, put me at ease when I'm anxious because we've had a few drop-offs and so on and so forth and vice versa, same thing. And not everybody's got a Dan and not everybody's got a Mike. So I was like, do you know what? This could actually work. We're going to do it very different to what the other mentors do it. 
like, you know, um, i.e. stick them in a group and crack on. It was more like, do you know what? Let's coach them. Let's be on hand for them. Let's build the best coaches. Let's look at their service. Let's look at their retention. Let's look at their onboarding. Let's look at their social media. Let's look at their sales. Like, let's start to fit, you know, fit people into it, almost like um, a biceps and banter mold to some degree where we've got tried and tested proof that doing the basics, being yourself, being consistent and hard work over time will pay off because all of this rubbish is out there around sell for a thousand pounds for three months and like Dan says, you know, outsource and, you know, take a step back from your business and you, you shouldn't be doing all of this in your business and, uh, you know, a 50% profit margin is great. And we're here and we kind of go, we did, we did over a million net profit last year. We have 85% profit margin, roughly doing seven figures yet you have coaches who are earning seven grand a month six grand a month with a 50 percent profit margin it's like this, this is just not good business advice um and it's solely because the person giving the business advice isn't invested in the actual person they're just giving out generic crap basically to line their own pockets because there's usually a vested interest in what they're telling the, the, the person to do. So if it's charge up front, for example, works well for the mentor because if you sell four packages, that's inflating your monthly. That's not four grand for, for a month, that's four grand for three months. But for the mentor, that's inflated it for them for their social proof. Likewise, if you, if they're telling you to outsource to a VA and use this VA or use this copywriter or use this editor and they're part of the same company or use this branding logo design and they're part of the, the the same click there's always going to be a kickback it's it's almost like the mates doing mates it's almost like politicians mates doing mates backhanded jobs and things like that mm -hmm. we don't have a va we've we, we run a seven figure profit business we do not have a va we do not have a sales team we don't have any of the we I can probably count on two hands the amount of times I've sold an upfront package and that's only because that they wanted it. I remember yeah. one of my clients just liked to pay for a year up front, another one six months up front because that's how he liked to pay. Um, I can count on two hands the amount of uh, mm -hmm. upfront packages I've sold. Everything else has been built recurring. Everything else. Much safer, much more stable. Um, <laughs> popular to contrary belief, you can buy a house. Um, believe it or not. Believe it or not, yeah, stupid. So everything that we've done is just by content, being ourselves, having a great product, giving it time, being patient, making mistakes, learning from those mistakes and 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 changing, you know, our thought process behind certain things and adapting. And in the next X amount of years, you know, we're hoping to go even further. At some stage, we're going to have to maybe reduce those profit margins slightly. But we're sat here saying we've got a seven-figure net profit business with 85% profit margin. If you're being told to outsource and do all of this at this uh, at an early stage, forget about it, like genuinely. So there you go. So it takes not to eight years, only for you it'll be much less time than that because we made so many mistakes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mistakes. And I, th I think it's more accepted as well, online coaching these days. I think when yeah. we started out, people didn't know what it was. And I know you were charging like 45 quid a month and things like that. Mm. It, I feel like now it's in a degree harder because there's more competition, mm. but at least it's more, more accepted like yeah. now, at least people kind of get it. Yeah, I, th I think as well, the one thing I, I wanna finish on is to say that it was never our target. <laughs> like, I think there's another thing there about targets and money and, and, and you hear people talk about this sort of stuff. We never set out to go, this is what you wanna do. Let's do a million, you know, let's do seven figures net profit, whatever it is. It was never really a goal. And, and again, it's gonna sound ridiculous saying it out loud, but it doesn't feel any different than the, the, the we first should, should we do a video on that? Like, yeah, probably. Like target, uh, setting targets within so like, business or something. Setting like that. targets, yeah, I think it's important. But like, just just finish this. Is that you got to remember what you want to get out of your business is the most important thing, because we look back over stuff that we've done previously and when we had like the most fun in our business and when we enjoyed it the most and and it, it certainly was maybe when we had slightly less responsibility, yeah, but younger, obviously, and all that sort of stuff. But I think it's important for you to remember that you need to th figure out what you want from your business. So we don't talk about this a lot hugely, but. I would not give up playing golf three times a week to make that number go higher. If it goes higher in spite of that, great. There's certain things that for me would just not give up to, to, to achieve. And I think that's another thing that again, later on down the line, you set yourself those goals. And I've always set goals that are not just a number. And I've had a couple of clients get sidelined by this and get distracted by this, but also mentally not being in a great place because they're focused on number of clients they've got and the amount of money they're making. 
And the second you flip that switch to go, I want to get back more time or I want to have more time to do this or I want to be able to do this more often, I think you will probably get to that number financially quicker sometimes. Well, the, the issue is, is that the end goal is never to work all hours God sends, right? That's, that's the end goal. The end goal for most people is usually so I can do more things. Mm-hmm. So that I've got a bit more security, that I've got a bit more safety, and I feel sa- like I feel safe. So that's why I'm going to earn this money. And the problem is, is that you will never feel safe. Never Whether you earn ten grand, twenty grand, thirty yeah. grand, forty grand, you won't feel safe. Like you picked the wrong job. You pick, if yeah. that's what you want. Yeah, and and you're picking the wrong metric for that security. So I know that again, like you previously, have because because I usually sit at a higher number of clients than Dan. Um, Dan has thought about. Um, should I just push up like type thing? Should I, should I push up, you know? And cause it's a conscious effort or a conscious decision on his behalf to not. And I'm like, and I, and I've said to him, no, don't like, don't Tr- take it from me. Y- you won't be happy. Like the reason why I've pushed up is, is through probably negative reasons. I would say probably like anxiety reasons or mm-hmm. scarcity reasons. That's, that's why I pushed up because if the end goal is to play, golf three times a week, we can do it now. So why yeah. would he stop doing it to then do it later down the line? And and that's kind of what I've said. So like, if you're looking for finances or clients through the door as the, the, the green light to be right now, I'm going to take time off. It won't, it won't come because I mean, fingers crossed um, our business doesn't go tits up, but I don't I, like, it, it's so strange. I don't feel like I can take more time away. Yeah, I should do. It's mm. it's a it's 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 a weird situation. So you do have to place it on different metrics or different values or different goals. Then yeah. than I think as finances. an entrepreneur, I think you'll always have that feeling. I don't think it ever goes. I think even you listen to someone like Alex Hormozzi, it's like it, it still drives him. It's, that's the still at his level. It's a bit different, right? He knows he's he's done. But it was it's three three common traits in it that he yeah, talks about. That's the thing. It's, yeah. What is it? It's um, it's never never uh, never satisfied. It's or never feel good enough. That was it. Never yeah, feel good enough. It's crippling sense of not feeling good enough. Yeah. It's um, it's almost like what was it? It's ego or something like that. It's knowing. It's almost like feeling like you're that. better than than other people. I'm sure it's something like something that. Like that yeah. It's feeling like you're better than everybody else. It's crippling sense uh, sense of self doubt, and then to play the long game. Basically, it's yeah. um, oh, that's gratification. delayed gratification. Delayed yeah. gratification. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the three. Things, yeah. And that describes how I am, like proper, yeah, properly, yeah, yeah. because yeah. I do. It I, also describes, as weird as it sounds though, is that I have the same view of like, that sounds ridiculous now with hobbies, but me playing golf. Yeah. I just want to be better than other people. Like, yeah. I just want to, and, I, and, I feel, and I'm prepared to delay that gratification to be better. I and mean, we've done it in business. We've yeah. done it. You see it pay off in the gym. You see it pay off in all these other variables, right? People do it in the gym all the time. Because I... I operate out of scarcity. So I operate out of, I don't want things to fail. Like I've got a massive fear of failure and self-doubt and, um, you know, over, o- over criticizing myself. Yet I'm, I know what I'm saying is better than everybody else. It, it, yeah, even weird, even it? when I got into it, even when I got into it, right? When I was in the, when I was in the military, I got told you can't make a, a living out of that. You should just sort your CV out and go in, in, into engineering. And I was sat, I swear to, I swear to you, I knew that I could make it a success. I, I knew it. I was like, I'm better than these people. Like, that's how I felt. Yet, at the same time, it's the weirdest feeling, still feeling as though you're not good enough, yet knowing that you're better. It's bizarre. Mm. Like, because I knew that I could, I, could do, I could do it better. I knew I could work harder. I knew I could study more. I knew that I was intelligent from school. Like, I knew all these things, yet I've just got this feeling that, that it's so bizarre that yeah. I feel like, if anybody says anything bad about me, that's the end of my world. Like, that's yeah, how it feels. It's, mad, it? it's so bizarre. Well, I think you're shit, so. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, that's the end of the video. So, um, yeah. Like, comment. If you're oh, still, yeah, if you're still watching. If you're still watching, do all that stuff mm. for us. But, yeah. We'll catch you on the next one.